Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. So today uh, uh, we were talking about uh, we have discussed about pulpotomy. We have discussed about pulpectomy, right? Apexification. We have discussed. We have discussed about uh, apexogenesis and all. So the next part which I want to discuss is a uh, indirect pulp capping. Okay. So when in broadly when if you say the treatment options for the primary tooth is vital pulp therapy and non-vital pulp therapy okay in vital pulp therapy there can be direct pulp capping and direct pulp capping uh, and the pulpotomy and in non-vital pulpotomy i mean non-vital pulp therapy it can be pulpectomy that can be complete or partial all those things i think uh, those things have been uh, covered during your classes okay so now coming to the yeah coming to the indirect Pulp capping. What do you mean by indirect pulp capping? Indirect pulp capping is nothing but uh, see. Uh, you want to remove the caries, okay? If you remove completely, if you remove the caries, there will be a pulp exposure, so that you will keep this little bit of caries there, and you place a medicament and you restore. Okay, so that is that is in short what that what is called as indirect pulp capping. So coming to the definition of indirect pulp capping, these are the definitions. Okay, any one definition you should know. I'm not saying you have to mug up all the three definitions, not required, at least one. Okay, so Matheson has de defined uh, indirect pulp capping as the uh, application of medicament over a thin layer of remaining carious dentine after deep excavation with no exposure of pulp. There should not be an exposure of pulp. But if you completely remove the caries, there will be an exposure of pulp. So you are not, so incomplete removal of the caries is done in, in short. Okay. So these are the other, other definitions. Uh, any one of the definitions you can learn and write for the exams. Now coming to the objectives of uh, pulp therapy, indirect pulp capping. So if it comes to, it, when it comes to pulp therapy, okay. When it comes to pulp therapy, uh, the main thing what you need to take into consideration is how, when you frame an answer, okay. The main thing is, what is the definition of that? What is the objective? What are the indications? What are the contraindications? What is the technique? That is how, that is the flow chart of your answer. Okay, so coming to the objectives, first and foremost objective is what? To maintain the vitality, the teeth should be vital, right? And keep the tooth properly in the arch, fine? Then, arresting the carious process, Third one is the promoting the dentine sclerosis or promoting the secondary dentine formation. Fine. Then uh, stimulating the formation of tertiary dentine and remineralization of the carious dentine. So these are the objectives. This is this is the reason why you are doing this procedure. Okay. Yeah. So now coming to the rationale. Okay. Rationale means which is the ideal situation, what is, what is the ideal scenario for doing this particular procedure. Okay, so remove the bulk of the lesion and the protect the pulp. If the entire bulk, then if you have done ex excavation of the caries, when you excavate, the entire bulk of the caries comes out. So your the entire bulk of caries is removed. Okay, so that it can repair itself by laying down the secondary dentine, thus the pulpal exposure is avoided. Means the entire Infected dentine is removed. Affected dentine is kept like kept there. So the affected dentine has an F, 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 uh, it will uh, help in the formation of the secondary dentine or a tertiary dentine formation, so that the pulpal exposure is avoided. All right. So coming to the difference between infected and affected dentine, this is again a short note for you. Uh, last time, last to last year, this was asked as a short note. Okay, so infected dentine is highly demineralized. Whenever you are seeing a cavity, okay, whenever you are seeing a cavity, if you if you remove the caries, if it is soft, that comes under infected dentine. Okay, so it is highly demineralized, which is unremineralizable. Even though if you do a pulp capping or if you do a whichever material you keep on top of that and restore, it is not going to remineralize okay then lack sensation patient won't have any problem when you remove it because there is no dental reviews everything is destroyed so there is no sensation 
okay then takes takes up the caries uh, detection dyes when you dye when you know, caries detection dye is placed this is the one which will absorb the caries detection dye at the at first okay and when you see the ultra structure of the infected dentine the demineralized in the tubular dentine with irregularly arranged crystals deoriented uh, disoriented uh, collagen fibers these are all the when you see an infected dentine under the microscope this is what you see fine so this is about infected dentine next is what affected dentine what do you mean by affected dentine it is intermediately demineralized means it is not completely demineralized it's in the partial verge okay if you just leave it it will go so it is a intermediately demineralized okay remineralizable if you do a if you do a okay, if you place a calcium hydroxide or if you give a you place an mca if you give a proper coronal seal it might remineralize okay then present in the deep layers when when you excavate when the patient says i am having sensitivity which means that you are in the affected dentine okay then which is sensitive does not stain because it's almost like a dentine only partial demineralization has occurred but complete demineralization has not occurred so the staining won't happen the staining won't be taken okay when you see the ultra structure which is partially demineralized apparent crystals bound to collagen okay so this is the ultra structure of a affected dentine yeah this is all i have discussed yeah now coming to the different zones of caries or different zones of caries progression okay so first the outermost zone when you see so this is the caries okay so i am talking about this one i am not talking about this i am talking about this one this caries this caries progression okay a b and c is the these are the zones a b and c all right so first one is the necrotic soft brown dentine teeming with the bacteria and not painful on removal that is your infected dentine okay then when you come little more deeper firm but still softened discolored dentine with few bacteria and painful to remove when you remove that patient will say that i am having sensitivity sometimes he might say i am having pain okay so that is the second zone and the third zone is the sound dentine a discolored area with reduced bacterial invasion and painful on instrumentation when you keep the probe itself patient will jump okay so these are the three zones of caries progression these are the three zones of caries progression this is how the caries progress i am talking about clinically not your oral pathology i am not talking about that clinically this is how the caries progress now coming to the indications and contraindications of uh, indirect pulp capping so indications i will put it in this way when it comes to history okay when a patient complains of mild discomfort for, from chemical and thermal stimuli then the child patient is having some food he is having pain when he is having hot food he is having pain he is having mild discomfort okay which means what what does it give it means the pulp is reversible and the stimuli is removed is fine he doesn't have any problem okay then absence of spontaneous pain there is no spontaneous pain it's very very intermittent when the stimulus is there he is having pain when the stimulus is removed he is fine okay now next is the clinical examination in clinical examination large caries lesion caries lesion is very large okay absence of lymphadenopathy if lymphadenopathy is present means it's a long standing lesion there is a it's a chronic lesion so absence of lymphadenopathy then normal appearance of gingiva normal color of the tooth gingiva is normal there is no abscess there is no signs of abscess there is nothing gingiva looks healthy okay then the same thing the normal color of the tooth tooth is tooth is, uh, you know the color of the tooth is normal there is no discoloration of the tooth present discoloration in the sense uh, the non vitality if there is no nothing like that is seen now next is a radiographic examination so when it comes to the radiographic examination first is a large caries lesion which is in close proximity with the pulp but it's not involved in the pulp it is it is 
encroaching the pulp. It's not involving the pulp or approximating the pulp. I mean, I want, it, it's not encroaching, it's approximating the pulp. Encroaching means you're already gone. So it's approximating pulp, it's not involving the pulp. Then the la normal lamina dura, normal periodontal ligament space, and no interradicular radio lucency. Uh, if there is inter any interradicular radio lucency present, means there is a bacterial invasion is there. Okay. There is a if there is an interradicular bone loss is there, means there is a bacterial invasion. There is a bacterial seepage through the uh, axillary canals is there. So nothing is there. Everything is fine. So that shows a green signal to go ahead with the indirect pulp capping. Now coming to the contraindications, the exactly opposite of what I have told now. Spontaneous pain present. In clinically, there is a huge KDS lesion which is a, a, a involving the pulp, lymphadenopathy present, there's an abscess present, discoloration of the tooth present. Okay, radiographically, there is an interradicular radiolucency present, uh, widening of the lamina dura, large KDS lesion which is involving the pulp. All these things are the contraindications of indirect pulp capping. Fine. So, in short, the tooth selected for indirect pulp treatment should fulfill the following criteria. First is no history of pain, no history of spontaneous pain, unprovoked toothache. Okay, then no tenderness on percussion, no mobility, no radiographic evidence of any pathology. Okay, then no radiographic evidence of abnormal internal or external root resorption. So these are all the ideal criteria for selecting a tooth for indirect pulp capping. <clears throat> so this is an overview of uh, how the procedure you guys will be doing. First, there's a caries there. Caries is present. Okay. If it's not involving the pulp, it's deep. Okay. So the second diagram, you can see that, uh, you know, the DK has been removed. You can see that that, that cavity, that's the that's, uh, outline of the cavity. Okay. So the caries has been removed. Okay. Now, the residual VK is arrested by placing a, uh, you know, calcium hydroxide or any suitable medicament and it is trying to remineralize it. So this is an overview of indirect pulp capping. This is what you guys will be doing. Now coming to the procedure in detail. Fine. So Indirect pulp capping can be performed in two appointments as well as in one appointment. One appointment means if it's a straightforward case, you are just doing the procedure and giving a permanent restoration. Okay, two appointments means you will re-enter after two weeks, I mean, after six weeks. Okay, then you will give a permanent restoration. That's only the difference. Fine. So in two appointments, first is you need to give a local anesthesia because when you are removing the caries, sometimes the patient might have pain. So it's always better to give an, a local anesthesia and isolate the tooth with rubber arm. Okay, then cavity outline outline with a uh, with a high speed handpiece means the ca cavity will be there. So you can make a small outline by using an aerotor. So that which is it will ease in the removal of the caries. Okay, then the soft mushy infected dentin can be removed. That that again I have told in the previous uh, zones of. Caries progression, I have told that soft caries has to be removed. Okay, then has to be removed with a large round burr in a slow speed and uh, slow speed and squeeze without exposing the pulp. Slowly, you have to remove the entire that black I mean, or a brown thing, what is seen has to be removed. Okay. Now, coming to the remove the Peripheral caries dentine with a sharp spoon excavator because the, uh, you know, with, with the caries that is there on the floor can be removed with a slow speed. Whichever that is involving the margins or involving on the walls has to be removed with a spoon excavator. Then irrigate the cavity and dry the cavity with the cotton. Nicely irrigated, all that, uh, you know, debris has to flush out. So nicely irrigated, then place a cotton and dry it. Fine. Then cover the affected dentine with the hard setting calcium hydroxide cement. The entire base, you, you in conservative, you would have done, you would have done a placement of a sub base, right? Calcium hydroxide sub base, zinc phosphate base, same thing. So place a hard setting calcium hydroxide on top of the 
affected engine okay then fill the fill or <laughs> base the uh, remaining uh, remaining part of the cavity with the intermediate restorative material okay intermediate restorative material can be placed then do not disturb the the sealed cavity for 6 weeks because 6 weeks is required for the formation of tertiary or secondary dentin or you can uh, in short we can say the formation of the dentinal bridges okay so 6 weeks don't disturb just let it be there so recall the patient after 6 weeks yeah in second visit again the tooth is asymptomatic okay then uh, the surrounding soft tissues are free from swelling temporary filling is intact take a bite wing radiograph of the treated tooth should be assessed for the formation of a reparative dentin because the dentin thickness pre operative and then in thickness post operative 6 week the thickness would have increased which means that the formation of reparative dentin has started okay then again using local anesthesia and rapid time isolation carefully remove the temporary filling especially the calcium hydroxide dressing over the deep portion of the floor where we would have kept the calcium hydroxide on the deep floor of the cavity okay so that portion don't remove it uh, just like that slowly you remove the temporary material keeping the calcium hydroxide intact there okay then then the remaining affected carious dentin should uh, see once you place the calcium hydroxide what happens is the tertiary or the tertiary dentin or the uh, secondary dentin formation would have started okay so there will be some caries that would have left out for removal so that caries will appear as a dehydrated and flaky flaky it's, it's, it will be just like a flakes okay so flaky and should be easily removed means just with the probe just you just tap it it will come out because that's all dehydrated it's just a flakes that is present there okay so it should be easily removed then the area around the potential exposure should appear as whitish and maybe soft that is a predentine means once you remove this flakes you can see the dentine there you can see the tertiary dentine that is formed there it will be very white in color okay and you will feel when you touch that that is going for an exposure so that area you have to keep it that is a predentine formation means that is how the dentine forms okay and do not disturb that then the cavity preparation should be again irrigated and uh, dried so these are all the different steps which i have explained okay then after that place again a calcium hydroxide on top of the soft area place a gic restoration and on top of that you are supposed to give a full cover restoration that is nothing but your crown in primary tooth if it is in a permanent tooth you can give a uh, you know restoration and hold it depending upon the place where the cavity is there fine so in internal mouth capping again <coughs> these are the this is the first one where the temporary restoration is placed after the dentine is i mean after the caries dentine is removed uh, you can see here the temporary restoration is placed and this is the calcium hydroxide that is placed at the floor of the cavity fine in one appointment i am i am not uh, you know i am not again going to explain this in one appointment it is, it is the same instead of placing the calcium hydroxide and giving a temporary restoration and asking the patient to come back you are skipping that uh, appointment and directly you are giving a permanent restoration and a coronal i mean full cover restoration so that is single sitting indirect pulp capping which you guys are doing in endodontics okay giving a sub base base and restoration that all comes under this okay so the first appointment a second appointment you will be placing i mean the in one appointment the caries is there you are preparing the cavity you are placing a calcium hydroxide and that appointment itself you are placing a restoration fine now coming to the materials that is used for indirect pulp capping the most commonly used material is calcium hydroxide then mta then biorentine then all these things fine okay 
So this ends your indirect pulse capping. I'm not going in detail about each materials. Okay. Fine. Just read. Just read it. Just about the calcium hydroxide. What are the composition of the calcium hydroxide? That's it. Just read it. Fine. The only thing what happens is when you place calcium hydroxide or MTA, it forms a bridge there. You can say it as a calcific bridge or a, a, you know dentine bridge formation will be there. So that bridge will act as a flow roof for the dentine to form, or there won't be any bacterial ingress from the coronal surface towards the particular surface. Fine. So this is about the indirect pulse capping. Fine. Any doubts? Any doubts? So next part is direct pulp capping. Okay. So what do you mean by direct pulp capping? Direct pulp capping is nothing but when the pulp is exposed. Okay. Be either because of mechanical trauma or because of carious exposure, you are placing a, a med suitable medicament on top of the exposed pulp and giving a restoration. Fine. So that is called as a direct pulp capping. Okay. So what is the uh, coming to the objectives of direct pulp capping again to seal the pulp against bacterial leakage bacterial leakage is there. So you need to seal the pulp against the bacterial leakage, then uh, encourage the pulp to wall off the exposure site by initiating the dentine bridge means you are placing a calcium hydroxide on top of the pulp tissue, which is exposed. So then uh, that exposed pulpal tissue, that area that will form as a bridge over the exposed pulp. You understand what I'm saying? The pulpal tissue is exposed. Okay. So on top of that, you are placing a calcium hydroxide. So this calcium hydroxide, what will happen? That will wall off the pulp and that will form a roof of the pulp chamber. Fine. Then next is to maintain the vitality of the underlying pulpal tissue and the region. Coming to the indications of direct pulp capping. So the normal pulp following the small mechanical exposure, uh, when conditions for favorable response, favorable response is optimal in primary tooth. In primary tooth, you can do uh, in the direct pulp capping only if it is a Freshly mechanical exposure. If it is a carious exposure, you are not supposed to do a direct pulp capping in primary tooth. Okay, permanent tooth fine. Then direct pulp capping of a carious exposure in primary tooth is not recommended. So coming to the indications, why it is not recommended? Because of the uh, one thing is the high vascularity of the pulp, primary pulp. Primary pulp, the vascularity is very high. So when you remove, however, when you remove and the pulp is getting exposed because of carious exposure, the microorganisms would have leached out, leached into the pulp. Okay. Number pump, when you are removing the caries, okay, caries remove pump and accidentally pulp exposed. Okay. So imagine when you are when you are removing it. Aha. However, there will be some microorganisms that can leak into the pulp. So because the pulp is highly vascular that will be that entire microorganisms would have been circulating then into the entire pulp second thing is the dental tubules the width of the dental tubules is more in primary tooth so when you assess that okay this is have gone to only till this area before that only the microorganisms would have leached into the pulp okay so coming to the indications no pulpitis no reversible pulp i mean only reversible pulpitis is present in such cases then the history Tolerable dull mild discomfort from chemical and uh, thermal stimuli, absence of spontaneous pain is, is the almost similar of similar of direct indirect pulp capping. So the clinical examination, last carious lesion, normal appearance of the gingiva, everything is the same. Okay, radiographic ex uh, examination, last carious lesion, close to the pulp. 
okay then normal lamina dura normal pdl ligament space no interradicular or periradicular radiodosency present then coming to the contraindications exactly opposite of what are the indications are one indication what you need to add is we add over here the mechanical exposure while preparing the cavity okay traumatic injury of the anterior tooth immediately the parents have gone got the child onto the i mean to the dentist you can save by doing a direct top capping fine now now coming to the clinical success of pulp capping direct pulp capping formation of the dentinal bridge maintenance of the vitality absence of sensitivity or fade uh, minimal pulp 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 inflammatory response absence of radiographic uh, signs of dis, uh, dystrophic changes dystrophic changes is nothing but any periapical or pathology present okay so these are all the signs which shows that your direct pulp capping is successful okay now coming to the procedure procedure first is the debridement debridement is nothing but when imagine you are cutting the cavity and suddenly the pulp is exposed so the entire surrounding area has to be cleaned entire the remaining caries has to be removed so that is that comes under your dead debridement okay this is the clinical scenario of how it will be for a direct pulp capping fine the pulp is exposed during the cavity preparation now next part is what hemorrhage control because bleeding will be there so you need to control the hemorrhage how you can control the hemorrhage by placing a cotton moist cotton on to the surface of the uh, you know bleeding spot okay then next is the exposure exposure enlargement sometimes it might be pin point exposure so in pin point exposure you cannot place sufficient amount of calcium hydroxide so slowly enlarge the exposure site very minimal i am not saying that you have to make a huge exposure site slowly enlarge the exposure site so that the sufficient bulk of calcium hydroxide can be placed on to on surface of the calcium i mean on surface of the exposed pulpal tissues then the bacterial contamination again the bacterial contamination can be done how by placing a proper restoration okay when you place a medicament and placing a proper coronal seal will lead in bacterial decontamination means automatically the bacteria cannot survive there won't be any uh, you know uh, source of energy or source of food for the bacteria to bacteria to good morning bacteria to survive okay so this is how you will do a direct pulp capping okay so the pulpal exposure is there you have placed a calcium hydroxide on top of the zinc oxide and on top of that zinc oxide is not is nothing but a sub base or zinc phosphate whatever it is and giving a restoration okay so coming to the limitations of uh, successful uh, limitations for the success in primary tooth which i have already discussed the abundant supply of blood and uh, consequently faster inflammatory response and poor localization of the infection because of the high vascularity you the moment you try to localize the infection you can't be able to localize that will be keeping on rotating onto the pulpal stream okay then potential for internal resorption calcification chronic pulpal inflammation necrosis and interradicular involvement if you are trying to attempt an direct pulp capping for an cariously exposed or cariously exposed tooth if it is a traumatic exposure that's different because there is no microorganisms present immediately you are cutting the cavity so namal cavity cut cheyum pattan the pulp is exposed which means that there is no there is no microorganisms present once you are excavating and that uh, when you are uh, uh, what do you say your uh, pulp is getting exposed means there will be bacteria present the bacteria load will be more okay fine so this is what is your direct and indirect pulp capping is fine any doubts